everybody. Uh, I think we'll get started here. Thanks, uh, everybody, for attending today. Uh, again, my name is Dave Taylor, and I'm the product manager for HVAC Solutions for the uh, National Comfort Products line. And um, <clears throat> just a few uh, of the uh, things that we have to go over. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat box and I will get them and I will try to answer them as they come in. If I see something that uh, I know that I'm going to cover a little bit later on, uh, I'll hold up on answering that question. But uh, I will try to answer them as they come in. Okay. Uh, what we're going to be covering today is a company overview and we're going to be talking a little bit about what is National Comfort Products and who they are uh, related to. Uh, they're part of a much larger organization. Uh, we're going to talk about the markets that, yeah, that uh, they are in, the multifamily specifically, and uh, where that market is going uh, this year in the Chicagoland area. We're going to talk a little bit about their split system products, uh, their condensing units and some of the features and benefits uh, of those. And we'll then, then recover their through-the-wall gas packs, uh, which are probably more popular here in Chicago. Um, talk a little bit about some new enhancements <clears throat> that are coming down the line. And uh, then I'll try to get to all questions and answers as we get along. OK. All right, a little bit about the company. Um, the company is based in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, uh, just outside of Philadelphia. So they are American made. And the company is called National Refrigeration and Air Conditioning. They're a part of a much larger uh, organization, international organization, and the National Comfort Products line is just uh, one of the lines that they handle. Uh, this is kind of an overview of some of the uh, buildings that they occupy, uh, all in Ben Salem. Uh, they have a sales and engineering and showroom and testing lab that you can see on your left-hand side. Uh, most of the people that we deal with are based in that building. Uh, they have a fabrication of metal uh, where they make the casings on Dunks Ferry Road. And they have a shipping and some of the uh, actual assembly in the warehouse on Winks Lane. Um, the production facility is a 200 square, 200,000 square foot facility. So there is quite a bit of manufacturing space there. They have some very sophisticated machinery, uh, some that you'd see in a much larger corporation. Uh, they have robotic brakes, uh, copper machines, and this Savanini punch cell is a machine that probably runs about half million dollars. Uh, that actually forms all the casings. It takes painted metal in on one side. It uh, breaks all the casing, the sheet metal, stamps the grills, and off uh, the other end of the machine is just a uh, uh, the shell so that you can put the heat exchange and the cooling shaft in. But uh, they do invest a lot in their machinery. They have uh, refrigeration charging machines, leak, te uh, leak checking machines, so these are coming off the line. They are working when they go out to the job site. So you don't have to worry as a contractor or an engineer that, that they haven't been fully run tested before they get out to the job site. A um, little bit about the multifamily market. Uh, because that's where these specifically go into, the multifamily market. Uh, you can see a little bit the, about the housing starts. You can see in 08 and 09 when we started going into the Great Recession. Multifamily housing starts, just like everything crashed. Well, it was hard to get mortgages for people. So you can see around 2010 and into 2011, that took a dramatic rise upward because people had to live someplace. They couldn't get mortgages. They did have to live someplace. Now, Fast forward to 2013, 
and you can see that the National Multi-Housing Council projects a strong demand. And we're seeing that in Chicago. Uh, I've probably quoted through the first quarter uh, more uh, through-the-wall jobs than I've quoted in the past, probably past year and a half. So we see a lot of strong, um, strong quoting process. Uh, as you can see, 250,000 units are going to be uh, additional, are going to be added across the country. And uh, these could <clears throat> dramatically rise once you get past the fiscal cliff issue, which you already are. Of course, there's always another fiscal cliff that's coming up, so we'll have to wait and see. But that last point, the steady rise in assisted living in over 55 communities, that was where a lot of the quoting activity is, is coming from that I see on our side of the things. A um, little bit more national statistics. Uh, the multifamily housing starts jumped 27% from February, and these are from March. Uh, and it's 82% higher than March of 2012. And it's above the 10-year annualized pace. You can see by quite a bit. So the multifamily is new construction market is really starting to boom. And do they think it's going to be a, a just a short uh, volatile kind of up and down? Uh, not according to a lot of people. I have more slides that I'm not going to show you, but uh, they feel that this is going to be a market that's going to be very popular. Uh, also, as the replacement side of things, too, because there are probably tens of thousands of these through-the-wall units in the Chicagoland area. Uh, you probably see them as you uh, drive along some of the interstates. We'll kind of show you what they look like if you're not familiar with what they look like from the outside. Uh, National Comfort Products is 100% focused on the multifamily market since 1989. Uh, they go through wholesalers and distributors only, and they're committed to advanced research and development, uh, and they're coming out with more and more technology, which we'll get into that as we, as we go on throughout the slide presentation. Okay, a little bit about their split systems, because that is part of the through-the-wall market. Why use a through-the-wall? I guess I really have to address that first. Uh, first of all, it's safety. Uh, you see things, you see condensing units on the ground and multifamily units, and they get stolen. They get stripped of their copper. Uh, so that's one thing that you really don't have to worry about. Uh, it's more cost effective to either do split system through the walls or uh, split system gas packs. Um, and uh, they're easier to work on too. So you see them all over, hotels and motels, student housing, uh, retirement villages, garden apartments. Uh, if you start looking, uh, you'll probably see quite a bit of these all around but more in the multifamily market. And I have seen them in high, as high in uh, buildings of uh, 20 stories, too. But the split systems are designed to be used with a, an inside furnace or condensing unit. Uh, the 2000 energy standard, 2011 energy standards are currently at 12 SEER for these uh, space, space constrained units, or 9 EER for the comfort pack, that's the gas pack and we are using 410A refrigerant. That is specified. Um, different sizes, three sizes in the split systems, a ton and a half, two and two and a half ton. Uh, usually with anything larger than that, you're going to be putting in multiple systems, uh, knowing that these units, uh, you know, unless they have a uh, roof load, probably don't really have to get any larger than two and a half tons. Uh, most of them are interior units anyway, so most of them are covered by the ton and a half. Uh, there's three different cabinet widths, uh, depending on which you need. There's the 1000 series, which is 26 and a quarter wide by 28 and 5 in inches high. And most of them are all 18 and a half inches deep. That'll cover the wall size. The 3000 series, which is 24 and an eighth wide and 32 high and the 4,000 series, which is 30 inches wide and 23 inches high. Most popular in Chicago are the 1,000 and the 3,000 series. So 
So these are pretty much standard like window units. These dimensions are standard. Uh, the other manufacturers out there uh, conform to these because they have an existing sleeve and you don't want to have to knock out any bricks or anything like that. But there is, there is that possibility in some cases. But uh, these are pretty standard. And uh, in Chicago, the 1,000s and the 3,000s are uh, what we have. Uh, spec sheets, they all have spec sheets on their website, nationalcomfortproducts.com. And you can see the, the D and the E series. The E series uh, uses a, a Copeland scroll compressor. That's a little bit newer model. But if you want to uh, download some of these spec sheets, uh, the sheets they have on the screen now are the uh, four color, glossy, uh, heavier stock uh, paper. You can go to their nationalcomfortproducts.com website. But you can see over here on the right hand side, those are all the electrical specifications, the dimensions on top. Uh, a few of the things, uh, you can see the 1000 series, uh, the uh, airflow is always up. Uh, one of the things that they just added is new service valve arrangements. Uh, the service valves were on the side, but if they had to do any sweating, uh, the, uh, it would affect the sheet metal casing. So with input through the contracting community, they did put the service valves in front of the coil. So it's a little bit easier to get to. And usually on the back like this, uh, that you have access through the uh, mechanical room, little closet out in the porch, something like that. So they do have improvements all the time. Uh, this is some applications of customization. You can see on the left hand, it looks like they knocked out a bigger unit and they put one of the through the wall condensing units in and they blocked it off with wood. Uh, the middle picture, you see some customization that uh, National Comfort Products didn't do, but it looks like they kept the grill on and they just fed the refrigerant line to a condensing unit on the wall. And I'm sure that the owner thought that would look very good. Uh, and, but on the right hand side is a little bit more customization, but again, they just put a, uh, uh, like a block off plate and they sort of painted it to the color of the brick, but it still doesn't look very good. What National Comfort Products can do is customize it, and there you can see that they build a customized panel that blocks off the plate, so it looks much more finished look. So if you do do these by one at a time or a whole large project, uh, we can customize a panel for you like that. Plus the architectural grills, uh, they have a extruded aluminum. Uh, the, the regular one are just a wire grill. You can see just the wire grill there as I flip back a slide. But you can get customized extruded aluminum that's anodized and had a clear coat finish on it. Or you can get those uh, with any kind of uh, paint that you want on it. Uh, a lot of times we've had people replace one unit and then get several other grills because the existing grills in the job, you know, have started to corrode or, you know, uh, have all sorts of uh, gunk and things like that. And so they get more grills than they do units. Uh, one of the product improvements for 2013 for the split system unit, uh, you can see on the left hand in the red square there, they have uh, adjusted the louvers. Uh, they've made it a little bit more aerodynamic versus the old one on the right-hand side, which caused a little bit more turbulent airflow. So the newer grills uh, allow more air in and allow for better efficiencies. So you'll see that coming through uh, pretty soon. And I just wanted to make sure that you realize this is not a through-the-deck unit. This is a through-the-wall unit. So just a little bit of humor here. It uh, looks like this could be some sort of food warmer or some hot dogs and hamburgers that uh, somebody came up with, but a uh, pretty expensive food warmer. All right, I'm just going to quickly check questions here. I don't see any questions coming through. Uh, again, if you want to do a question, uh, you can just type it in the chat box and send it to the entire audience or just send it to myself. Uh, at the end, I also have my email up there. I'm going to leave that on there. If you want to ask a question uh, and get a hold of me, uh, my email is up there. And uh, I'll give you all my contact information. So if you think of something after the show is done, you know, please get a hold of us. 
All right, the gas package units, which we see quite a bit more of here in Chicago, um, they call these their comfort packs. And you can see these all over if you drive around Chicago. You can see them, uh, let's see here, right there, right off the patio. Or sometimes there through the wall. Uh, but if you look and you're driving, uh, you look usually off the patio. They're pretty easy to spot. And if you start looking for them, you'll see a whole lot of them out there. Um, there's a lot of confusion with the DOE guidelines coming into effect on May 1st. Um, just wanted to clear that up. The uh, comfort packs are designated as a single packaged vertical unit. Um, they are non-weatherized, but they were um, always outside of the 80%, uh, 90% range. Um, since then, obviously, the, the Department of Energy has backed down, and they, they said, well, we're not going to implement this um, because of uh, a lot of different things, from freestanding uh, furnaces to uh, you know, through the wall units. So it, it, um, it's really kind of a moot point right now. But they always were classified as a single package vertical unit, and they didn't fall within those guidelines. Uh, but they are, I will say, that they are going along and um, coming out with a 90% uh, gas package through the wall that fits into the same unit. Uh, gas pack units, uh, three different heat sizes for gas heating, 38,000, 51,000, and 64,000. The uh, 51,000 is the um, most common that we see here in Chicago. Uh, 64,000, uh, if you go up a little bit further up into Minneapolis, we see some of those up there too. They have electric sizes, 5KW, 10KW, and 15KW, and four sizes for cooling. Uh, the one ton size, we don't see that very much down here in Chicago, but we do stock a full array of these here in the Chicagoland area and quite a bit up in the Minneapolis area. And, um, you know, so if you see something up there that you want in stock that we don't have, please get a hold of us. Uh, completely self-contained, uh, if you're not familiar with these units, uh, they're a very nice unit. Uh, they're pre-wired and pre-charged. No outside condensers, refrigerant lines like you saw in that one slide. Uh, no separate cooling coils for furnaces. Uh, the removable chassis, uh, that's very good for service work. Uh, what a lot of contractors do is they remove the chassis if they want to take it up for flight, four or five flights because this can weigh anywhere from 300 to 350 pounds. So if you want to uh, remove the chassis, you're welcome to do that. It just slides out like you see the, the folder right or the picture right there. And it's got a patented furnace uh, system, a burner system, and heat exchanger, which we'll talk about in a second. <clears throat> they come pre-wired and they come pre-charged. Uh, just a small sample of local jobs here. Um, these are all in the Chicagoland area except the last one there. That was uh, an apartment complex up in, the, uh, up in Milwaukee. Uh, again, some specification sheets uh, that you can download on their nationalcomfortproducts.com website. Uh, the left is the gas, the CPG, the Comfort Pack Gas, or the Comfort Pack Electric, CPE, is on the right-hand side. Um, one of the things, uh, these do fit in the same wall uh, openings as the uh, Magic Pack. The HWCs, um, the supply and the return are in the same. Let me get out my pen mode. The supply is up here. That's the same. The return is underneath, although you can get a slotted return if you have a return that's open to the conditioned space. You can just have a slotted return there. there. The electrical is right up here. The gas is right up here also. So this is uh, an exact slip-in, slip-out, slip-out, slip-in 
uh, of a magic pack unit. So if you're in the replacement market, if you have a lot of these, the gas lines, the electric lines, the supply and the return, they're all in uh, the same spot. Uh, here's a cross-reference, and again, this one's on their website if you want to go print this out. Uh, but here's a cross-reference to the magic pack units right here, or the magic chef on the CPG models. So if you'd like to uh, download that, you're welcome to do that. Uh, again, the dimensions. Uh, this is another one of their spec sheets, but the dimensions here, the width, the height, the width are exactly the same, and so are the depth. But here you can see where the supply air is, the gas, the electric, and the return air is down here. So that's exactly the same as before. A couple of the nice things, uh, a couple of the enhancements they have uh, that make it better. Uh, they have a secondary drain pan. Normally the drain pan is down here, down at the bottom. You can see the clear plastic uh, PV, or not PV, clear plastic tubing down there. Uh, and they have a secondary drain pan. So in case you have a clog, <clears throat> the secondary drain pan takes over and shuttles uh, the uh, condensate to the outside of the building. This is kind of how it works. If your drain pan is clogged right there, your primary drain pan, the secondary drain pan takes over and it goes out to the base of the unit and that's sloped and it goes out uh, to wherever you have your drain is. So that's one of the nice features. Uh, one of the nice things is they have uh, the service ports. Uh, when I show this to uh, building owners or maintenance people, the service ports uh, are a very, very hot topic. And the uh, service ports are Cormac service ports, which allow greater time for charging or vacuuming the system or uh, evacuating system uh, or actually just changing the uh, refrigerant if you have to do that. But you can see that right here, you get out my right here are where the ports are. Many of the manufacturers have their ports located on the back, on lines that you can't get to or very difficult to get to. So when you hook up your high side and low side to here to take pressure and temperature readings, it's very easy. I'm going to go back two slides here. Right there, you can see that you can button everything up here. You can put your refrigerant lines through that little plastic knockout and take your pressure and temperature readings. With some of the other manufacturers, you can't get in there. Uh, you can't put the machine back together to take pressure and temperature readings. It's all exposed to the 95 degree air and you can't get correct pressure and temperature readings. So that's one of the nice features that we like about it. Uh, a little bit about the insula installation here, if you're not familiar with how these go in. The uh, wall sleeve, you can see the wall sleeve down here. It comes knocked down. You put it together and you put it in the, in the wall. And these bars right here, these angle brackets, are right up here, right up here on the unit. And that is a stop. You can see it stops it right here and you put a little rubber grommet in there and that stops it from going in too far. So you put the wall sleeves in first, and I've got another slide about the wall sleeves. I'm going to check questions here. All right, I was asked to come a little closer to the mic there. I hope that helps a little bit here. All right, uh, let's see. What is the lead time if we need an electric heat and electric AC unit, and do we stock them? Uh, yes, we do stock electric heat. Um, I'm not quite sure what capacity you want, but uh, if you need to have uh, what we have in stock, just uh, call one of our national Excelsior branches 
and they can tell you what the stock requirements are. Uh, you can get their number on uh, our, our website, excelsiorhbac.com. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, question is, with how tight construction is becoming, have they done anything about the holes in the exterior, exterior louvers? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean, so you can maybe expand on that, or you can call me a little bit later. I can answer that question. Uh, let's see here. Okay, got a couple more questions. What fills the gap around the sleeve where there is no washer? Well, around the sleeve on the wall, that's a pretty tight fit. I mean, uh, you can always put some caulking or some insulation around there, but that is a very, very tight fit. So there's really no exposure to the outside. And, and don't forget, this, this unit, this like you see in the picture on the slide here, this is really in an outside um, mechanical room on a porch or something like that. Uh, if it is in the outside, and it is sometimes in the outside, what contractors do is they just put a little insulation around that. Uh, question is, can this replace a tappan? Um, the tappan units that I've seen are thinner and taller. So the question is no, or the answer is no, it cannot replace a tappan. Uh, you either have to maybe put it against the wall or knock out some bricks. In that case, you would have to knock out some bricks. Or maybe put it flush with the interior wall or maybe back a little bit and then create a little sheet metal transition, I guess. Um, but that's not really that's not really uh, uh, I'd say recommended from the manufacturer. So uh, I would have to say no. It really doesn't uh, replace a tappan. Uh, high efficiency filter options. Uh, we've had this question before. That's probably a MERV seven filter. Um, you can't get. First of all, there's not a whole lot of room there to put higher higher efficiency filters uh, and the airflow the pressure drop across the filter would kind of uh, would very much affect the uh, um, the unit performance so if you want higher efficiency there's different ways of get higher efficiency um, uh, you can do all sorts of things that you can put in the airstream from uh, ionization devices to UV lights uh, HVAC Solutions, TEC, Excelsior do market some of these. Uh, we will be at uh, some of the uh, barbecues for Harry Alter uh, with their HVAC Solutions to truck to talk about these. So if you do want uh, things that uh, kill DOCs or get more particulates gathered to make the filter more efficient uh, without putting a, a larger filter in there or to kill microbes, we have a lot of these things that uh, can attach to the unit, to the discharge, or to the end of the fan. So come see some of those. Uh, let's see here. OK. Uh, a little bit about the grill options. Um, again, just like for the through-the-wall condensing units, they have all sorts of grill options. Uh, like I said, a lot of people get these along with it because some of the grills get old and faded or chalky, so they order one or two units, and they also get more grills with them, and they also get more grills for the units that are uh, still out there. But there are all sorts of grill options. Some of the grills cover just the uh, unit itself. Some of the grills cover uh, uh, the little uh, maybe inch uh, unit uh, part of the unit around the grills. So there's all sorts of grill options that you can get. Those take a little more lead time. Uh, there's even some applications where we see some fresh air. Uh, if you need to bring in some fresh air by code or some sort of requirement like that. Uh, the coolie, uh, the cooling chassis advantages again are easy access service ports, uh, Molex wire connections. There's a fan interlock switch, a stab switch on the door. So if you pull off the uh, the filter access door, it shuts the fan off. 
and there's a five-year limited warranty on all the parts too. Uh, this is a little bit of a this is a, a section a cross section of it that you can see that here the access ports are right here. Um, some of the manufacturers have an access port, uh, a service port back here. Uh, some of them had just one up here, maybe the high side up here, the low side back here. So it's very difficult to work with some of those. Uh, again, look from the other side. Um, and, and like I said, this slide's totally, uh, completely out. So this is about 250 pounds here. So if you want to bring this up separately, if you have several stories to uh, bring it up, you can do that. Uh, this is a picture with the service access ports right there. If you button up everything, uh, you can put your, uh, your, your, your lines right through there and you put all the access panels back on and you get uh, the 75 degree air coming back so you can take good pressure and temperature readings. A little bit about the furnace section. Uh, you can see with the cooling chassis out down here, you can see it's pulled out. You can see the return air down there from where it comes through. Uh, here's the burner section. And here's the access panel. You can see the access panel is probably about 50% wider than the existing units right now out there from some other manufacturers. So if you've ever had to service these and get back to that inducer motor back there, it's not real easy with some of the smaller, narrower units. Uh, also, the circuit board is right there. It's not on the door, so you can actually see it. You can see the blinking lights right there through the, uh, the access port. And there are the Molex plugs right there, so no more hardwire connection, you just pop two Molex plugs out and you can pull it out and serves it very easily. Uh, a little bit more about the heat exchanger. Um, this uh, heat exchanger is a Resner heat exchanger. Uh, you can see it pictured right there. It's a clamshell type of heat exchanger. It's aluminized steel. Uh, and a lot of times in some of the older units, you get some of the tubular heat exchangers um, that uh, are blown out after about seven years. But this one has a little drainage channel right there. You can see it right there, which allows in the summertime when you have outside air inside the heat exchanger and it condensates, you can take that drain and it goes right down there. You can kind of see it right there. So you won't have as many uh, heat exchangers burn out on you. But uh, again, they have a serpentine and a heat exchanger. Some of the furnace standard features, uh, long life titanium stabilized aluminized heat exchanger. Uh, it is patented. Uh, the integrated circuit board on the um, inside of the uh, service area that you can see the diagnostic lights without opening the unit up. Um, and they have a good three-point uh, isolation with uh, rubber grommets for the uh, venture motor too. Uh, using some of the latest heat exchanger te technology, like I said, it's a resonant heat exchanger. It's quiet. Uh, it's got one burner. I, I have another picture coming up, but it's got uh, a very quiet combustion system. It's got one burner. It doesn't have many multi-port burners like some of the other manufacturers or ribbon burners. Uh, freeze resistant inducer motor uh, because outside conditions in some of the areas in the country can be very, very difficult. And uh, you can get all sorts of things in there with rain and insects and everything else. Uh, I mentioned the larger access ports for working, uh, less working parts and a 10-year warranty on the heat exchanger. Uh, this is the burner side. Uh, this goes into the heat exchanger right here, and you can see this is where they have the burner up here. That's where the in-shot burner goes. Uh, the sight glass for the diagnostics, remember the circuit board is right here on the wall, it's not in the door, so you can actually see the uh, blinking diagnostic lights. And you can also see the flame and the igniter and everything. So if you can see if it's making uh, making a flame. Um, the big access door, we talked about that. 
Uh, the handy box on top, and again, this is exactly the same spot right here and right here are exactly the same locations from the Magic Pack unit. So it's a slide out, slide in, it's a direct application. Uh, this is a look, little bit what it looks like outside, uh, finished. You can see the vent right here. All right, this is the intake for the uh, condenser air, the out, uh, the uh, discharge for the condenser air. So that's a little bit what it looks like when it's everything's finished. Uh, this is a little bit uh, the sleeve here. You can see the sleeve's been put in uh, during the construction phase when they put the wall in, when they built the wall, and uh, then you can. Um, put the units in uh, as the uh, construction uh, finishes out. Uh, again, this is the same picture that you saw before. Uh, this is the one looks like we're finished here with the supply up here and the return down here. Some people build a box that the unit sits on. Some people just uh, mount it on the wall and they have just some flex duct for a return. Uh, again, this is one that uh, hasn't been hooked up yet. Uh, before you enhance, I'm going to look and see if we've got any questions here. Uh, let's see. Um, are thermal expansion valves available on this on these units? Uh, no, they not. They're not. They. I'm sorry. They are. I'm sorry. They they do have it. Let me go back. I'm trying to think if I have a slide that shows you where that is. But yes, they do have thermal expansion valves on it. Uh, it's tough to see it on the unit when you have a picture of the unit because they have them wrapped up. But yes, there are thermal expansion valves. Uh, are stainless steel available? Uh, yes, some of the newer units, we're just going to get into that right now, some of the newer units use, uh, to get to the 90% are going to use tubular heat exchangers and they are going to be stainless steel. Let me go back a slide. I was hoping to find it uh, for the person who asked about TXV valves, but uh, I was not able to find the slide and I was not able to find a close-up of it. Um, some of the new comfort pack enhancements, the package gas electric, um, they're working on these things. Uh, a slide-out heat exchanger, uh, this is going to be a big item. Uh, it's much easier to service, uh, much easier to replace the heat exchangers, and you, you do see the tubular stainless heat exchangers. Um, they had to go to tubular to uh, get to 90% and they're evaluating uh, different uh, heat exchanger manufacturers to do this. Um, so you can slide out the whole thing. You can slide out the gas valve, the control board. Everything is going to be very accessible for you. So you don't have to worry about uh, how big the uh, control panel door is. Um, I'm going to cover the questions. Uh, so why choose National Comfort Products and National Excelsior? Very high quality equipment, uh, either replacement or new construction. A lot of improvements over the existing units out there. Uh, proven track record, there's thousands of the tens of thousands of these units out there. Uh, shorter lead times because of their production facilities. Uh, responsive customer service, uh, either from the manufacturing side or from the distributor side. They are a uh, large company with small company ideals, and there's full stock in Chicagoland. We have it in Melrose Park. We have some in Lansing. We have some of these, really, in, even in Milwaukee, we have some of these. We have some of these in Minneapolis. Um, so they, uh, they are all over the Chicagoland area. There, there's uh, some in Elgin also. Uh, there's my contact information. I'm going to look at questions one more time. Uh, 
Uh, I don't see that we have any more questions. So I'm going to leave my contact up information up there. If you do have any questions, uh, you know, anything else in detail, um, be looking forward to talking to you. Um, the manufacturer does come out uh, quite often to the Chicagoland area, so we can you know, get them to your particular applications if need be. Um, there's your website on there. Uh, but if there's uh, no more questions, uh, I'm going to end the webinar. So I'll leave the question screen up a little bit, or you have the phone number there if you want to get a hold of me. And thanks very much for attending, and uh, thank you for your business.